What's up everybody? It's December 2nd, 2019. I'm in Canyonlands National Park. I'm headed to Murphy Point for a quick overnighter. So I had about a four hour flight from Nashville into Salt Lake this morning and then about a four hour drive from the airport uh, with a quick stop at REI down to the Island in the Sky Ranger Station. Picked up my permit and now I'm on the way out to Murphy Point. It's a short hike. Uh, it's a good thing though, it's already about 345. The sun's gonna set here pretty soon. So as you can see, that's where I'm headed. So hopefully I find a nice campsite and check in here in a little bit. You know, I mean, you can drive from the high desert to snow-capped mountains in just a few hours. So it's pretty unique in that regard. I mean, you've got a couple of other states uh, where you can do something similar. Arizona, New Mexico to some degree, obviously California, but um, it's just a beautiful state all around. Oh, I haven't seen anybody else out here. It's about, I'm guessing 36, right around there. So the low tonight is supposed to be around 21 or 22, I think. Um, but there was basically nobody in the entire park. I mean, there was a few cars on the main road coming in, but by far the uh, least populated park I've been to, uh, no doubt, it's being that it's December 2nd. So it's kind of nice to have the place to yourself, especially on a short hike, because you tend to find that trails like this that have an amazing view at the end of you know a couple mile hike, those tend to be very busy trails. Um, so this is really the time of year to come if you're gonna do a trail like this. Okay, I'm coming up at the point here. I'm probably gonna to wanna to cut over. I think it's kind of just where you wanna camp. I mean, we've got some potential spots down here, over there near the edge. And then you can keep going down the trail and that takes you to the overlook. What I'm thinking is that he told me to cut over early because it might not, the trail or the uh, foliage down by the, the overlook might not lend itself to something you can easily cut through or not as easily as this other stuff. So, we'll see. And here is the campsite I found. Pretty amazing. So it's down on this sort of false ledge, so to speak. So there's a drop down there and then off that, I'm pretty sure it's just straight down. But yeah, pretty pumped about this site. Couldn't have asked for a better setting. It's uh, it's about 6:45, 6:50, and uh, yeah, it was uh, extremely cold last night. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the low was, but it was supposed to be down in the low 20s, and uh, I think it was every bit of that. So um, I slept in pretty much everything except for my uh, rain gear. Sun's finally coming up, which is a godsend. Everything was covered nice. Um, obviously the tent. Pretty good layer of frost over everything. I actually haven't checked my pot yet, which may be frozen shut. So I'm about to make some coffee. So now comes the fun part, which is breaking down a tent that's covered in ice. But I want to do it before it melts. So I didn't stake, I didn't stake this down at all last night, um, except for these two uh, uh, feed ends right here, because in order for this tent to really um, you, to be able to take advantage of the inside space, you have to sort of to stake these out. So I just used two rocks, but uh, 
The reason I didn't stake it out, obviously, is because I'm on rock. There's actually a flat uh, dirt surface right here where I could have pitched it, but the dirt was so soft that it just would have been an absolute mess. Um, just moving around there, churning up dirt, and everything I have would have been covered in red dirt. So I'd rather pitch it here on the rocks and not have to deal with that. So one thing that obviously helps is to have some sort of some sort of active heat source. So out here you can't have a fire. So I have hand more hand warmers inside these mittens. So anyone who's done you know winter camping knows that if you just have a really cold hand and you put it inside of a mitten, nothing's going to happen. Like that that mitten's not going to keep your hand warm. Now it's better than just having a bare hand, but it's just. It just doesn't work that way, right? So if you've got a really, really cold foot and you put it inside of a really heavy sock or even a down booty, your foot's just not going to instant, you know, be warm in five minutes. Um, and, and arguably, your ha your your hand or foot might never get warm. So you have to have some sort of active heat. So whether that be a fire or a hand warmer, um, something that you can do other than just blowing into your hands, uh, because obviously you can't do that for your feet. So last night I slept in. This really thick, heavy wool sock. It's made by Woolrich. It's called Big Wooly. And I had uh, down booties on as well. And I had um, feet warmers inside of uh, the wool sock. So, I mean, and even then, you know, my feet were cold initially, but uh, an hour or so later, they were, they had warmed up. But, and I was in a, a 10 degree sleeping bag. So I wouldn't want any less of what I had. And it, like I said, I mean, it was, it was probably about 20 degrees was the low. That was supposed to be the low anyway. So, but yeah, hand warmers are a godsend. So speaking of down booties, these are uh, the Goose Feet Gear down booties. They're in a custom uh, camo uh, pattern. So these are 25 degrees. And I'm actually thinking about having Ben put some more stuffing into them. Uh, my feet run a little colder than I thought. So I'm thinking about just taking them down to zero degrees. Um, and if, if stuffing can't be added, I'll just buy a second pair um, and, get, and get a pair that's rated for zero degrees. And I had the overbooties for them. And I, it has the Tough Tech, I believe it's called, on the bottom. So these are great for kind of just moving around your immediate camp area. I wouldn't say that it's a, a true camp shoe. And I, you know, I don't think they're advertised as such, but it's not going to replace like Crocs or sandals or something like that. Um, I typically use Crocs. Uh, only because they're durable enough that I can kind of walk all around with them. I can, you know, climb on rocks to some degree. Um, so I use them in the Sierra and stuff like that, and I don't have any issues stubbing my toe. Or, In my opinion, it's superior to a sandal. It provides your feet a little more protection. It's a little heavier, but I think it's worth it. You've probably been wondering what this is on my nose. It's actually called a Breathe Right Strip, and I wear them when I sleep. Um, it just helps you, obviously, breathe better at night. But uh, one thing I was going to mention, something that helps to have is um, actually a waterproof mitten. So um, as opposed to just having like a down mitten that's going to keep your hand warm, um, having something that's waterproof for winter camping uh, really goes a long way because if you're going to expose, if you're going to expose your hands to ice, to frost and things like that, it really does help to have something that's waterproof. So these are Gore-Tex, uh, it's a synthetic insulation, like I said, which is what I want. I want something that's waterproof, I want something that's synthetic. Um, <clears throat> so there's a time and a place for down. Obviously most of the stuff I have uh, is down. Um, I actually think the only thing that's not down are the mittens. Yet yeah, it, it pays to have something that, you know, is not going to lose its insulated properties when it gets wet and that has like a waterproof membrane on it.
So you notice I'm using the actual ground sheet from Big Agnes as opposed to, you know, Tyvek or something like that or making my own. The main reason for that is, you know, I'm only hiking a couple miles in here. I don't really care about the weight, so I, I just want something that's as easy to use as possible. So, you know, I, I've used a, kind of a makeshift um, ground sheet before. The stuff you can make out of like the window, the window shrink kit. You know what I'm talking about? The window insulation. I forget what it's called. But uh, I've used those before, and they're kind of a pain in the ass. So that's great. I mean, if you want to be ultra light and you're hiking really far and you're doing a lot of elevation gain, but on a flat two-mile hike, I just want something that's as easy as possible to deal with, especially in the cold. So I'm just using the Big Agnes ground sheet. All right, I'm all packed up here and uh, about to hike back to the trail. Say a half mile of off trail hiking. I noticed that everything here, it's kind of like a miniature version of California. So like in, this, in the high Sierras, you would see a tree like this, except it would be massive. Well, I'd like to get a picture over there from that end. Things right off the trail. Things just asking to be decorated. All right, we're finally back to the parking lot. There's one other person here. There was nobody here last night. The ranger told me I was the only person with a permit for last night, but I did pass this guy. He was doing a day hike this morning. I was gonna go to Arches National Park, which is sort of on the way. Um, to Park City, which is where I'm headed now. I'm headed to Park City for the rest of the week. I don't know, two people actually died there like 72 hours ago. And I think they got some rain a couple days before I was out here. And I'm sure that created some slippery conditions. So I don't know if it's worth taking a two hour detour, two hours plus, uh, not driving. Driving is technically on the way, but by the time I do the hike and all that, take pictures, come back. It's gonna be a couple hours out of the way. I already have to drive four hours to Park City from here, so I'd like to get up there at a reasonable hour. I'm probably just gonna, gonna head up to the hotel.